Hello, my fellow Freedom Builders, and welcome back to the channel. As you might have noticed, then lately I have done some different videos about some of the different EV companies. That could be Nikola, that could be Tesla or Neo, uh, uh, Hylian, and so so on and so forth. And that is in the EV space, uh, the compressed natural gas, uh, the hydrogen, and so on. And um, what I can see is that there is an enormous interest here and uh, I am trying to diversify the, the stocks a bit that I analyze. But right now I can see that you are very interested in these electrical vehicle uh, sector stocks. So today it will be Blink. I mentioned Blink in the other video I did the other day where I uh, took a, an over, uh, overview of the, or at least most of the uh, EV space and mentioned a lot of different companies. And one of these that I mentioned was Blink. And I actually think Blink is uh, really, really interesting. And um, if you follow this video always through, I will show you why I think it is interesting. And I'm going to uh, talk about some possibilities with these stocks that I don't see in the other EV stocks. First of all, as you might recall, I sometimes have compared this uh, EV sector and the development right now to the gold rush uh, in the 18th century. Because up through the 18th uh, century, we saw a, a gold rush in the United States and we saw all of these gold diggers running out to the West to find gold and become rich. But as I mentioned, and I have mentioned in a couple of videos, is that it was very, very rare for these people to get rich. They were more often getting killed than they were uh, getting rich. But do you remember who I mentioned was really getting rich at this point? Yes, you might do. That was the equipment sellers. As you can see here, there is a hardware store with, uh, for iron, steel, uh, coal, etc. And uh, you could buy your shovels and your horses and you could uh, rent a space to sleep. And these people were making a killing. And that is why I think Blink is essential right now, uh, or Blink and these kind of, of companies, because they're not selling EVs. They're not, uh, they're not in the fight for uh, which electrical vehicle will be the best or is uh, there going to be some natural gas or some hydrogen. No. They're providing electricity to all of the cars that are running on electricity. Of course, you could say that if hydrogen wins or compressed natural gas wins, then of course, Blink might have some trouble. But as right now, as I'm going to show you today, I don't think that is really the case. As we can see here, Blink is not really a newcomer in the market. Let's just have a look at the chart <clears throat> here. We can see that they actually started in 2009. And at that point, there was some uh, uh, there was a, a hype uh, going on. And um, well, I'm not really sure about the price here, uh, if there's something wrong with that. But they have been a really high priced uh, stock. And now they are, it, it seems like they are down at a very low point here. But if we are taking a look at the last couple of weeks here, the last month, they have been in on the EV gold rush. Now, uh, this, uh, of course, is not really built on their fundamentals, uh, or at least not on, on the numbers, uh, the revenues and so on. But if we analyze this stock in what we call a quantitative fundamental way, we're looking at is there a market in the future for stocks like this? And yes, I believe there is a market for, for this company. Blink, as you can see, they are offering these charging uh, devices. And um, as you can see, you can put them up pretty much everywhere where there is access to the electrical grid. And that is the first benefit of this sort of, uh, of products here, because if you compare that to a normal gas station, you would need some quite a lot of space. You would need some huge gas tanks that were to get uh, dug deep into the ground and uh, you would need some environmental clearance and so on and so forth. And, and you would need some people getting there and get the gas. You would uh, getting gas from huge trucks coming, filling up your tanks uh, once a week or something like that. But here we just have access to the electrical grid. And that is basically what, um, what Blink, uh, what, what they do. 
um, and uh, there is on the website a lot of description here but you can also uh, download a um, a company description for the investors and that is what I'm gonna go through quickly with you today to talk about the pros and cons with this company but of course remember that this investor presentation is pretty much a sales material so of course they will mostly be talking about the pros with uh, blink uh, because this is a material that will that is meant to lure you into investing in their stocks of course and um, therefore all the people are happy when using blink of course they're all smiling and looking successful because you will be happy and successful as long as you use blink it kinds of say but okay let's go through it first of all we we can see that right now they have something like um i think altogether 23,000 charging stations all over the world. Some numbers are saying 15,000, but that is because there's, um, there's a bit of a difference between some of their products. Some of them are owned by Blink, and they make money on selling the electricity. And some, some of the stations are being sold to uh, some to, to private people to have in their houses and so on. So there are a, a, there are a, a lot of different uh, nuances here I'll get into. But just be aware, they started in 2009, and in 2009, there was a big hype about the EV, uh, the, the entire future of the EVs, and we were beginning to focus a lot on global warming and so on, but uh, it, was, it was kind of a fad at that point. It, it was not really big, not as much as, as it is right now, and we are going to look at the numbers just in a second. Right now, Blink is uh, running a, um, a member uh, base and they right now have above 150,000. I actually think I saw the number 200,000 somewhere. Uh, members, uh, it is free to become a member, but members are using their stations all over the United States. And now I'm saying all over the United States. Of course, as you can see, there are large holes in the network here, but of course they are mainly focusing on the west coast and the east coast uh, where the large, uh, large cities are but eventually they of course will be covering the entire united states uh, and also uh, abroad as i'll get to in a second so what we can see here is let me just make sure you can see all of the chart here all right here it is as you can see and i'm not even sure you can see it because it is rather small but when they started in uh, 2009 this is the number of uh, electrical vehicles that were sold in the United States uh, that uh, from 2008 to 2010, so that was actually over three years, they were sold 4,700 uh, EVs there. So that was not very much really to build a business on, but they have been in the business. They have been uh, getting experience with their customers. They have gotten feedback. They have built their products. So they are actually 11 years into building experience right now, whereas many of the competitors might be starting up right now thinking, wow, EV is on a hype, let's build a, uh, a, a charging station company. Uh, Blink is already there. And as you can see, in 2011, 7,000 uh, EVs were, were sold and so on. And uh, here in 2020, this is a bit of an old uh, presentation they had, but they are estimating 600,000 EVs sold, and that would be 3.75% of all vehicles sold in the United States. So uh, about 3 to 4% of the entire base of, uh, of the cars sold in, in the United States would be EVs. And as you can see, um, their number is going up to three and a half million. That is the estimates uh, in 2025. I don't think that is entirely uh, impossible, not at least with the hype we are seeing right now. They are also writing the numbers here. Uh, 2018 US EV sales were up 81% from 2017. That's quite a lot. Uh, we can see the numbers globally here. Uh, there are currently more than 1.2 million electrical vehicles in the United States and so on. So this is, when we're doing our, um, our fundamental analysis, our qualitative fundamental analysis, uh, we, can, we are trying to uh, evaluate if there is a future market for this product. 
And of course, it is hard to say if it is Blink that will be winning this game, but we can at least uh, see that there'll be probably no shortage of customers. So that is an important uh, thing to uh, have a look at. So we have some more EV rapid growth stages now. Uh, yeah, we that is also part of the sales material you could see. But as you can see here, OEMs uh, committed to go all in. So that is all of the brands that are right now saying we are uh, expecting to put a ton of money into development uh, of uh, electrical vehicles. And as you can see here, that is Porsche, Tesla, BMW, Chrysler, Fiat, uh, Ford, Kia, Nissan, Jaguar, Land Rover, Audi, all over the place, Toyota, Mitsubishi, and Volvo. So all of these people, all of these companies, uh, I should say, are competing for the same space of selling EVs. And that is why I'm saying that Blink is in quite a good position because their charging stations can service all of these different uh, brands uh, if they don't if if the single brand if for instance uh, Mercedes are not uh, fitting the, the blink station then there are some adapters you'll just put on the the charger and then it can fit right in so 40 models currently available and more being announced each quarter so uh, this is where the fight really goes on right now and blink is not a part of that fight but they are providing electricity to all of these. So no matter if GM or Kia or Porsche or Tesla will be the future winner, then Blink will be able to deliver uh, electricity to them. It should be said that Tesla have their own network, huge network here, but as far as I can see right now, they are only, um, they, they are only fitting the, the Tesla cars. So right now, all of the other brands here would have to go to Blink or some other electricity provider. But that is, of course, a, a threat into the future. If Tesla can see that someone like Blink is coming up and being a, a competitor in the electrical or the, the EV network uh, providing here, uh, they might open up to say, yeah, well, then everybody can use the Tesla charging stations. And that, of course, would be a huge competition to watch Blink. So that is something we should keep in mind. But of course, we have all the plans here. Forts are planning a lot of billions and car makers, a hundred billions by uh, 2020. Volkswagen uh, accelerates electrical car effort. GM, Porsche, uh, BMW. Yeah, all of them pretty much. They are going for this market because they can see that is where the growth will happen in the future. So what do Blink actually do? Well, they design, manufacture and sell uh, sell and deploy uh, these charging stations. They own, operate and maintain, uh, maintain them. And uh, then they generate revenue from selling both the equipment, uh, but actually I sense that they would rather own the, the charging stations themselves. And then they're making money selling electricity uh, a bit more expensive than what they are charged for it. So they are interested in as many people uh, using their equipment as possible. What is also nice here, and we can see this, they have 180,000 plus members. That is uh, not entirely up to date, I think, and 23,000 plus EV charging station deployed. <coughs> we can see here the development in the history, number of members and so on, and all of the, the development of their products. I'll not go too much into the development of these products, but just saying that they have uh, different um, uh, different small niches here. They have their home charging units that you can have in your own home. Then they have the different charging stations, uh, the single, dual, triple uh, for commercial charging units. Then they have this one room. You might have tried to run out of gas on a dark highway some night and have to walk to a gas station and get a five liter little uh, tank of gas with you. In the future, you might be dragging along with this one instead if, you, if you're running out of, of electricity on your car because this is a portable charger and they're coming up with a new level three here, a, a fast charger. But as I said, I'll not go too much into details with the different product. You can read about all of that yourself. I will be linking to uh, this material below. Um, what I do, let's just go down here. Here is um, a select client across verticals, as they say. And the reason why I'm, I think this is important is that if you remember when I talked about, uh, for instance, the Nikola 
stock. The, the Nicola, they are not really having any real customer experience right now. I know they have signed up with some uh, test trucks where Anheuser Busch, uh, the brewery, and they might be taking 800 trucks and so on. And they are testing some of their equipment right now, but they don't have real customer feedback. What you can see here with Blink is that they are in a huge number of different niches. Parking and services, as you can see here, I'm not familiar with these companies, but I am from Europe, so I suppose that these are uh, US-based uh, parking companies. Um, commercial and residentials, workplace, as you can see that uh, Starbucks and Facebook and Eastman and so on, they are using them. Healthcare, a lot of uh, colleges, a lot of universities, they have uh, the charging stations there. Retail, you can see Walmart, Whole Foods, Ikea, 7-Eleven, Shell, and so on. Um, hospitality, you can see McDonald's. I think Burger King also came. And that is because that people, in the future, when we drive an electrical vehicle, I know that the battery check is getting better and better, so soon we'll be able to, uh, I don't know, run a thousand miles on a single charge. But uh, people know that this is a question about it takes a bit of time to charge your battery So if you're going into Walmart and you're spending an hour or two in there, then why not? Uh, charge your car while you're there and imagine Walmart saying to blink well in every Walmart parking lot We want 10 or 20 blink stations there um, and we'll do some partnership model where they are splitting the the earnings on the electricity or something like that, that could be a huge, huge deal. And that is what these um, uh, these companies are doing right now. You can see entertainment, governmental, and so on. So they have a ton of customers already. And what I do like, and that is when we're looking at the different models. Of course, they're developing new models, but it is not like they are needing to revolutionize an entire business. Of course, they need the best possible chargers that can charge the fastest. But right now, the main cost of development, of research and development, are done on the vehicle side, meaning that Tesla and, and uh, Nikola and uh, Neo and all of these companies, they are using billions and billions of dollars to develop a new tech, whereas Blink, they're kind of following and saying, yes, we of course need the charger that fits the new tech. That of course is obvious, but uh, they can actually spend most of their money developing new uh, charging stations, uh, expanding their network and so on. So they are not, they're not putting billions and billions of dollars into some development that they cannot be 100% sure will pay off. Whereas if they're using $100 million to start a, a bunch of new charging stations, then they can make a quite a simple calculation and say, what does this charging, sta charging station cost? Uh, and in this area, what do we expect to earn on the charging, on the electricity? So that is uh, actually, I think it's a much more simple business model that if you want to put money into the EV space right now, I think Blink is a good choice because they are not as cash demanding, uh, cash intensive as developing a, a new car. So that is a part of it. Um, there's the Blink Network, they have their own app. And actually, as of just recently, uh, they have gone in and uh, at least I think Google Maps, maybe also Apple, I'm not sure, but with several of the, uh, of the map apps for the uh, smartphones, they have gone in and uh, made it made available so that you can see EV charging stations. Where is the nearest one? Uh, where is it in, in the area? So uh, Blink has also been a part of that. Um, the different revenue streams here, uh, as we can see, they have their energy sales. Blink owns charging stations, generate revenues through the sale of electricity. Long term exclusive contracts keep our charging station in place for a very long time. That's also a part of it. These Blink stations are low maintenance. Uh, it is not, uh, the, 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 there are not many moving parts here. So it is pretty much uh, a wire going up to this. There should be some software in a box so you can make sure that you can pay and you can rec recognize the customers but they are not a billion different moving parts here, so it is quite low maintenance. 
They are also selling hardware, direct sale of hardware to our host uh, host locations. Uh, that is because some of the there could be a hotel they want to own their their own charging station, but it could also be selling to privates. Then there's network management services, monthly network connectivity uh, fees, and so on for for charging stations. Then there's advertising. And first, when I read that. I thought, well, is that really a big thing? Generating income through advertising sales uh, available on various platforms and so on. And, and I thought, well, where are that uh, advertising going to be? But it is going to be uh, on the charging stations and on the mobile app. And you might think to yourself, is that really a big income stream? And it might not be right now. But at least here in, in Denmark, where I live, when, I am, when I'm putting gas, uh, just normal regular gas on my car, uh, today there are small screens on, on, the, uh, on the gas station where I get advertising for uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever they are advertising for. So that, that is what they're talking about advertising when you're charging, your, you're watching small apps. And if you're thinking, is that really possible to make money on? Then you should look to, for instance, France where this guy, Jean-Claude Decaux, uh, invented, you could say in 1964, uh, some advertising where he went into, a, a, I think it was a mall, and he bought the right to advertise on the inside of their toilet doors. So that people sitting there on the toilet, they could, uh, they could see these ads, and he bought the right to that advertising space and uh, sold it to advertise. And that was a complete revolution in advertising. And today, I'm not sure if they are in the United States, but at least here in Europe, in Denmark, they're huge, where they are uh, offering uh, to, to, the, to, the, uh, to, to a city that they will pay for, for instance, all of the bus uh, waiting uh, shacks here. And uh, they'll pay for it all in the entire city if they get permission to sell ads here on the side. And this is a huge business, billions and billions of dollars each and every year. So that is what they are doing. And that is pretty much the same. Uh, you could say that they could, Blink could sell advertising space here when people are uh, standing there bored anyway. Uh, I think that could actually become uh, a huge revenue stream. I'm not certain how large it is today, but just to say this should not be neglected. Then there are some energy services as well. There are something about the partnership models. Uh, there are uh, the, the different uh, who owns the stations, what they make of it and so on. Um, and you can dive into that by yourself. Of course, they're also mentioning the competitive landscape. And since this is a, uh, a sales material, then of course they are the best. So they are manufacturing hardware. They have the network, they own and operate. They have a, a bit fewer, no, not a bit fewer, but they have a lot fewer stations that, for instance, charge point. But uh, as for, they don't fail to mention, they don't own and operate. Uh, their business model is hardware vendor and network provider, whereas Blink is also owning it. And I think actually that in the long run, that model is significantly better if you can get it financed, because of course it's, it'll take some financing. So. I'll not go much into details with the rest of it. Um, just the, the last one here, you can see international ex expansion. They are going into Israel right now, uh, partnering up with something called Caruso Motors that I don't know of. And they're going into Greece, something called Yunus Energy. And I know that they're also getting their foot into uh, South Korea, that I think is a very, very good market to enter because South Korea is a very uh, high tech and uh, that is uh, th there's a, a lot of development happening right there in the tech sector so that would be a very good place to to get into as well so um this is a company that you should look out for no doubt about that if you're looking at the numbers so right now we have done what is called the qualitative fundamental analysis but of course we also want to look at the quantitative financials uh, of fundamental analysis and to be honest Blink Charging Co. here is not something that would pop up in my screener saying this is a rock solid company. Uh, as you can see, the overall stock rank in Stockopedia here is 17. We would we like it to be above uh, 70. Um, so it is not amazing. 
You can see the earnings per share is negative. It is getting better and is getting closer to being positive. And I actually think that in a couple of years, we'll see positive numbers here. They have gotten funding. As you can see, they're not a huge company. Um, you can see here in 2019, they had total revenue of just below $3 million. That is <laughs> insanely low. And uh, you can also see here that the uh, market cap is only just below 160 million euro. So it is a very small company. And that is, of course, something we should be aware of with the prices here. They can uh, fluctuate a lot because it is a small company. And if a big, uh, a big share owner all of a sudden wants to sell, uh, I don't know, 100,000 shares or something like that, that can really put a pressure on the price. But then again, if the hype gets into it, it can also quickly shoot the price upwards. So it is a speculative stock, but in you, you can kind of watch this two ways. You can get into this in a speculative way and, say, and uh, think, I think this is going to uh, go to the moon along with the rest of the EV space. Or you can be in more for the long run and saying, that with the EV hype and, and gold rush right now, there will be a, a huge need for charging stations and um, Blink charging could definitely be, be someone there uh, that can provide that. So you can see they're not really making money, but uh, as you also can see in, in 19 here and, and the estimates for 20 and 21, they are not as huge cash burners as they used to be. Uh, they, they, it is getting better and better. And as you can see up here, the operating profit uh, have went from a uh, negative 26 million to somewhere uh, around a third of that. So I believe they can get into the positive space. But of course, you're not buying a stock like this as a good rock solid fundamental stock. This is more uh, a speculative deal as to if they are going to be uh, the, one of the winners in the future. You can see here the Petrosky score three, bankruptcy risk. Uh, they, they are, it, it doesn't look good. Their free cash flow is negative, but it's getting better and better. Uh, working capital is in the positive. Um, and as we can see, they are not really in debt because they got the funding. Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago. When we look at the numbers here, the current ratio, it means that they have more assets than liabilities. So if, if everything was liquidated today, there would be more uh, assets, or at least in theory there would. It's not always you can get the, the, the right pricing for that. Interest coverage, they can cover all of the interest because they don't really uh, have debt. Um, but of course they can, and if they want to expand to get onto the, the, the double amount of charging station, they would need either to take on some more debt or they want they would need to issue some more stocks. That is the same um, the, the same problem I mentioned with the Nikola stock that maybe they can reach their goals and their visions. But if they want to, they need something like $10 billion. And right now they have seven or 800 or 900 million dollars. So they need something like $9 billion uh, to, to get the, the, uh, the entire process funded. And maybe they can find that, but that would dilute your owner's share, uh, no matter if they went out borrowing or if they issued some more shares. And that is, of course, the same here, that if they, at some point, and they, uh, it seems like they would need some more money to really get a hold on the United States and maybe also the entire world, well, then they would need uh, a lot of money and that would dilute your owner uh, the, your, your share of ownership. Um, a thing you should consider here, and I'll just mention this uh, at the very end here, I actually see a potential for Blink to be taken over. Because uh, I don't think Tesla will do it because they have their own network and, and they are very uh, branded on that. But um, we could consider something like, uh, for instance, Apple. Apple, uh, there have been a, a lot of rumors over the years that they are coming up with their own uh, Apple uh, EV of some sort. I'm not even certain where that is or if they have dumped the project. But let's say Apple comes out with a huge, uh, a, a huge project here on the in the EV space, then something like Blink might be something that Apple would uh, want to to uh, to make an acquisition of. Uh, it could also be uh, Amazon, for instance. I've also heard rumors about Amazon 
are going into this space and uh, I actually see I see Amazon like a company that wants to take over every single other niche in the world pretty much so why not uh, the delivering uh, fuel for the the future vehicles and uh, I think Jeff Bezos uh, could see himself like some sort of uh, uh, of Rockefeller or some uh, uh, standard petroleum guy that actually sits on uh, owns the the entire network of fuel for the new car. So Amazon might also be. So don't don't be surprised if you have stocks in Blink and all of a sudden there is a, a takeover bit. Uh, that would not surprise me uh, at all. All right. That's all for now. Uh, you can consider Blink. Remember, do your own research. This was just a short little a glimpse into it and I will link to all of, of the material below the video here. Remember to subscribe to the channel, remember to like the video down there if you liked it and uh, take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now, I'll talk to you again very soon.